Good morning. It is uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, August 25th at about 1025 in the morning. My name is Larry Cedar, and I'm back with you for another session on what I call scanning, which is a relaxation technique spelled S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G, which uses the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep state of physical, emotional, and ultimately, hopefully, mental calm. So here we are back again on a Tuesday. You know, every time I look at myself now, I think my hair is just like, it's, it's gotten ridiculously long. And, uh, you know, I'm just keeping it growing until uh, someone tells me I have to cut it for a job. I actually auditioned for a job this week, uh, which if I did get, uh, I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm perfect for it. It's a lookalike. Uh, if I did get it, I definitely have to cut it really short. So we'll see what happens. In the meantime, the pandemic continues, uh, the craziness continues, the world continues, and here we are, trying to deal with our state of mind, our state of consciousness on a daily basis, uh, some days better than others. Man, it can be a challenge some days. I've talked about, about uh, this idea of expansion and contraction, and the whole thing we do here with scanning is try to expand. We do it on a muscular level because the muscles are very simple. They either can contract or expand. It's the simplest way to approach uh, bringing yourself into a, an improved state of consciousness. Go through the muscles. You know, you can read a series of slogans or sayings or all kinds of books and ideas, and they'll just fill your mind with all kinds of thoughts, which are basically contractions, bringing together of words. Or you can skip that, skip over that more complex, more difficult to navigate uh, road and go straight to the musculature. And a lot of people say, well, I'm an intelligent person. Um, I, I'm not just some dumb animal. I, I uh, No offense to animals. I'm not just some dumb animal. I, I need to think my way into enlightenment. I need to understand. I need My ego needs to see how I did it and why I did it and the path I've taken and all that so I can pat myself on the back and then write a book about it for someone else to buy, etc., etc. And this approach is, uh, won't necessarily give you that satisfaction because all we're doing is going straight to the body. We're saying skip the mind, skip the ego, skip all that, and just go straight to the musculature because the musculature can either contract or expand. We're trying to move into an expanded state. Just expand the muscles, relax the muscles, and see what happens. What my experience has taught me is that if you release the musculature, if you expand the musculature, the, the heart, the emotions, and the mind will follow. So you can skip all that complicated thought process. That's all we're doing. We're going straight for the musculature. We're um, addressing ourselves, we're treating ourselves as though we are physical beings, because we are. Once the flesh and blood ceases to exist, we cease to exist. There's nothing to sustain the ego or the thought. So we are, at our root, physical beings. And I'm saying just go to that. It's the simplest, most direct way. It's the easiest to learn, the easiest to practice, and in my opinion, has the best results. So that's what we do. Scanning, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G, the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep state of physical, emotional, and mental calm. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to practice so you can get better and better at it. I have discovered for myself that I've pulled myself out of a lot of troublesome places mentally, uh, emotionally, physically by practicing scanning by incrementally releasing muscular tension. And that's as recently as a couple of hours ago when I was uh, asleep or not asleep. Uh, you know, depending on the day, I tend to get into a more or less either agitated state, uh, thinking about the state of the world and so forth, or a depressed state, which are flip sides of the same coin. Agitation is muscular tension, uh, compulsion of thoughts. These are contractions, bringing together of words and ideas, obsessively thinking about things. That's one side of contraction. The flip side, and we're talking about human contraction, the flip side of that is depression, which is emotional contraction. It's that time when you feel like it's hopeless. There's nothing that can be done. I feel too wounded and frightened and scared by these circumstances to actually face them openly. It's too painful. So I will withdraw. I will close in. I will protect myself from those feelings. I will pull in. That is a form of emotional contraction. So they're both contractions. Okay? They're just flip sides of the same coin. So last night, I have to be honest, I, I, I would say I was probably more dealing with an emotional type of contraction. Sometimes you get to a place where you're like, this is just too much. And by this, I mean the state of political affairs, the pandemic, the economy, you know, the shutdown. I'm in the industry, uh, I'm in the, the entertainment industry, which is completely shut down. And sometimes it just gets to be a bit too much. You just look around, you go, this is just really kind of intolerable. I kind of don't want to think about this or deal with this, so I'm just going to shut down. You feel yourself pulling in. It's emotional contraction. 
okay? And it's a way of protecting yourself. All contraction is a way of protecting yourself and dealing with the world. Pulling together of ideas, thoughts, activity to achieve a goal, or pulling in emotionally to protect yourself from pain, discomfort, anxiety. So these are, again, contractions. So I would say last night, and be perfectly honest with you, I was probably emotionally contracted. A sort of darkness descended over my consciousness. All felt lost. I'm not trying to be overly dramatic, because now I can kind of smile and laugh about it, because I've passed through it. And we do pass through these phases, hopefully. But yeah, everything starts to close in. And you can have all sorts of um, uh, feelings associated with that closing. You can feel tired, exhausted, depressed, um, just uh, just basically shut off from people and ideas and things. Uh, the the future can look just dark and and you know um, what's the word <laughs> hopeless, and 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 that's not good for you. It's terrible for you. You can't really act effectively in life when you're in a contracted state. So again, I use this technique, not patting myself on the back, just reporting to you this practice as I do it, to incrementally release the muscles of my body as I lay there in bed working my way through my body, I was amazed to discover how much contraction, physical contraction there was associated with this emotional contraction. I was not, not even aware of it. What happens is as you become uh, emotionally depressed, contracted, your body contracts. Everything pulls in. You implode in a way. You become impermeable. You become solid. You become closed off in denial about your reality. Everything pulls in. So as you force yourself not force, but as you decide to expand, as you begin to release muscular tension, which is what this technique does, you begin to open up. And there's a resistance to it, of course, because being contracted is a safe, secure position. Even if it's bad for us, it feels like we're protected. So there's a resistance, but as I begin to release the musculature, and we're going to do that in a few minutes, we're going to do that like we always do, things began to lighten up. The world began to look more available, more bright, there were possibilities I had stopped considering. I began to breathe more fully. I began to feel better. And I began to see that this world which I had determined was dark and hopeless was actually full of possibility. And I began to feel less depressed. I began to feel hopeful, or at least okay. I mean, you don't have to be jumping and clicking your heels, but you can feel like, yeah, you know, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. So that's what this did for me. So again, anytime you're contracted emotionally or physically, Expansion is the solution. And we work on muscular expansion. We start with the physical, and we trust that it will infuse our body with a sense of expansion that will then transport itself to our mind ultimately and clear our mind. Again, if the mind is a muscle of sorts, it too contracts. It holds on obsessively to thoughts, to anxieties. And as the muscles relax and let go, so the mind relaxes and lets go. And these dark, anxious thoughts there's nothing holding them down, so they just float away. That's all thoughts do is they float in and they float out. If we, they float in and we clamp onto them, we're stuck. If they float in and we just loosen up and say, okay, there you are, and we let them float away, they just keep coming and going all day long. You stay open, expanded, permeable, free, happy, still, quiet, a state of joy. That's all we're doing. Moving on, uh, moving in the direction of expansion away from contraction. So we're going to practice like we always do because I do practice this uh, sort of obsessively because I'm determined to get better and better at it so that at times like last night when I'm feeling particularly contracted I can expand and it's just a decision. You are in total control of your state of consciousness at all times 24 hours a day seven days a week you are in control of your state of consciousness no matter what the world is doing no matter how it is affecting you you are the ultimate arbiter of your state of consciousness you can at any time expand. So let's start. Squeeze your hands together. This is contraction. This is a metaphor for the two basic processes of the universe. I learned this from a man named Thaddeus Golis, who wrote the book, The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment. He said the universe is divided into two basic processes, contraction, squeeze your hands together, and expansion, release. That's it. Very simple. <clears throat> so I call this a binary metaphor because it's one of two choices. You can either be contracted or expanded. Now the interesting thing about this binary <clears throat> process is that you can't be both at the same time. You can either be contracting or expanding, but you can't contract and expand at the same time. You can't make a fist and release a fist at the same time. You're always somewhere in between. You can alternate very rapidly. You can go back and forth. You can be in a more contracted state or a more expanded state, but the actual process can only be one of the two. <clears throat> so when you are contracted, the beauty of this is when you're contracted, when you decide to expand, you stop contracting. So if you want to move yourself into a state of expansion, it's very simple. Just do it. 
Squeeze your hands together, tight, tight, tight. See what that feels like to be contracted. Three, two, one, release. You've moved into expansion. So we use this binary metaphor as a starting point to remind yourself <clears throat> of those two states, that you can either be contracted or expanded, and that it's up to you. So when you're feeling anxious, when you're having obsessive thoughts, when you're feeling like you must take action, there's a compulsive sense about you when you feel as though you're constricted or in a state of denial, what I call a state of no, or the flip side of that, when you're emotionally contracted, you're pulled in, you're resistant, you're depressed, you're contracted, you're overly contracted because contraction is a process which we all participate in every day. <clears throat> Whenever you make things, do things, say things, you're contracting, but we become overly contracted. When you're overly contracted, you have the freedom, the right, the ability to reverse that process. How? Simply expand. Three, two, one, release. And see how that feels different from contraction. Let's do this a few times just to remind ourselves the difference in feeling between contraction, squeeze tight, three, two, one, release. Take a deep breath. We'll talk about the breath in a second, but you're going to feel the desire to breathe as you expand. Your body wants to follow suit. It wants to expand with you. You know, we suggest things to our body and the body at first may resist, but then it gets what, where you're going and it wants to join in. So as you begin to expand with your hands, your lungs want to expand. Your muscles want to expand. You're directing yourself into more and ex a more expanded state of consciousness. You have that power. That's what's amazing. Squeeze your hands together tight, tight, tight. Three, two, one, release. You've just expanded. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Squeeze your hands together tight, 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 tight. That's contraction. Three, two, one, release. Take a deep breath. <sighs> now you may feel resistance. You may feel uncomfortable. You may feel dizzy. You're moving yourself, literally moving your state of consciousness. You're digging yourself out of sort of a contracted hole, a contracted locked in space you put yourself in and you're pulling yourself out of that into a state of expansion that can be disorienting. This has been our safe place. This is our go-to position when we're anxious or fearful or worried about something. So to change that is a bit of a risk. So you may feel disoriented. That's okay. Squeeze, 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 tight, tight, tight. Three, two, one, expand. Drop your hands, take three deep breaths. Another. And another. So we squeeze, release. We've taken deep breaths. And now the third step in what I call the preliminary phase, 15 seconds of stillness and silence. Complete stillness, complete silence. And sometimes we need those 15 seconds because, and I'm experiencing this now, as you take those deep breaths, you're really pulling yourself out of the state of contraction. You've been in a, you've been sort of a, a bear hibernating in a cave. And it's as if someone just grabbed you by the fur and just pulled you out into the sunlight. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Two seconds ago, I was secure and nicely contracted in this safe space. Even if it wasn't really good for me, I'm kind of found this position. And you've pulled yourself out into the sunlight and it's a little disorienting. So you need those 15 seconds to sort of adapt get used to this because we're moving ourselves now into a state of expansion. The other thing to note is that stillness is the opposite of action. Action is a form of contraction. Action is contraction. I want to do something. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to move a piece of furniture or something. That's contraction. You're putting together an idea with your muscles and this action. These are contractions. Now again, we're moving away from contraction. So when you sit in stillness, you've done the opposite of contraction. You've expanded. You've stopped taking action. Silence is the opposite of words and thoughts. Words and thoughts. These words and thoughts I'm making right now are contractions. When you take 15 seconds of stillness and silence, you have stopped contracting. Therefore, you are expanding. So all these steps, squeeze, release, deep breaths, stillness and silence, are ways of extracting ourselves from a contracted state and moving ourselves into an expanded direction. These are the preliminary phase. Then we'll get into the actual muscular release, which is the nuts and bolts of the technique where you really, really begin to induce a deeper state of expansion into your very being. So we're going to repeat this a couple more times, then we're going to move on. Squeeze your hands tight, 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 tight. That's contraction. See what that feels like. That's strength. That's decisiveness. That's great. But squeeze really hard. When you become overly contracted, you become restricted, rigid, immovable, impermeable, locked in, 
perhaps uncomfortable, maybe even unhappy. You'd like to stop. Don't know how. You've locked into this position. How do you do it? You simply make a decision. Three, two, one, completely release. How does that feel different? Drop your hands, take three deep breaths. <laughs> Fifteen seconds of stillness and silence. So I started by saying that last night I got into an extremely uh, contracted state, emotionally contracted, which is called depression sometimes. I was anxious and worried about, you know, all sorts of things. And now I'm realizing as I'm pulling myself out just how deeply I was contracted because I really feel as though I'm pulling myself out of a cave. Now, I had already done a, a session of scanning early this morning to kind of pull myself out of that deep sort of depression, that depressed state. And I thought I was okay, but now as I'm actively deep breathing and so if I'm feeling like, how deep I really was because now I'm really starting to sort of wake up and come out of that contracted depressed state and it, it feels completely different and it is disorienting and it is a little bit disturbing because it is a protected state. Contraction is a protected safe state, a safe space. So it feels a little risky to come out of it. You're back in the world. If you've pulled in out of contraction and depression, then you have pulled into this deep, deep cave to come back out into the world to emerge is wonderful but also a bit frightening. You've re-emerged. You face the music. Feels good. Feels a little disorienting, but feels good. And I want to remind you that I do this practice all the time. You know, I guess I, I would consider myself somewhat of a connoisseur of my own emotional states. I pretty much can identify where I'm at now at any given moment, but that doesn't make it any easier. I still feel all these extreme feelings of depression, anxiety, and then relief when I come out of it, I still take that roller coaster ride. I'm just more conscious of it now. What we're trying to avoid is being unaware, unconscious of our processes so that they just take us for a ride. And we find ourselves making decisions and taking actions which are possibly self-destructive and not helpful, simply out of reaction to this feeling. Instead of saying, okay, I see where I'm at now. This isn't great, but I'm not going to mess things up because of it. I'm not going to make bad decisions because of it because I'm standing outside myself and I'm aware of my state of mind. So I'm going to be smart about it. I can stay there for a while. Sometimes you can't pull yourself out. But I'm certainly not going to irrationally act on those feelings. I'm aware of what's going on. And if you've acquired this skill where you can pull yourself out of it, I'm going to apply that skill, as challenging as that might be, because you're fighting yourself. You want to stay in that contracted state. So as challenging as it might be, you have the skill to pull yourself out. So we've started. That's the preliminary phase, what I call the preliminary phase. We've extracted ourselves from our contracted state. And again, by contraction, I mean either agitated, muscularly, obsessive thoughts, or the flip side, depressed, contracted emotions. We've pulled ourselves out. We're back in the world. We're comfortable in ourselves. We're at peace. And now we begin the nuts and bolts work of this technique, which is the actual muscular release. Again, it's a dumb technique. There's not much intelligence or theories or anything involved. We're just relaxing the muscles. We're forgetting about the mind. The mind will relax after the muscles have relaxed. We're concentrating just on the musculature. It's what makes this technique so beautifully simple. Try it sometime. No matter what's going on for you, just concentrate five minutes, ten minutes on incrementally releasing the muscles in a particular region of your body. Just pick one. Repeatedly, do it again and again. Take lots of deep breaths. Sit in stillness and silence and then repeat and see what it does for you. So we're going to start with what I call zone one, the face. I've divided my body into eight zones. You can do whatever you like, but the idea is to isolate smaller areas of musculature so that we can more easily concentrate on and focus on releasing that tension. Zone one, the face. So when I flip, you know, when I clip my fingers, snap my fingers, that's like a switch. If you have power onto your muscles, if the power is allowing these, these muscles in my hand to make a fist, when I flip that switch, it's like I've turned the power off and the muscles just relax. Now it takes energy to contract. It takes no energy to expand. So the other benefit of relaxing is you immediately reduce the power demand, the energy demand on your body. You know, you find yourself these days, a lot of us feeling tired, tired, I'm tired, man, I'm really tired. Why? We're not doing anything necessarily. It's because we have this low level of energy being burned by this constant low level tension. And that tension we hold as a form of self-protection, either mental tension, hanging onto our thoughts, ideas. 
I got to tell you, politics these days is exhausting because everyone's clinging so tight to their political position and defending it. It's just draining us. We're all drained, you know? If you could take a moment to just forget about politics and say, it doesn't matter, you'll save yourself a lot of energy. Try it once or twice a day. In any case, we're going to flip a switch. Watch my face. Three, two, one. I let go of all the tension in my face. And that's what we're looking to do. That's what we're going to do throughout our entire body. But we're starting with the face. We snap the fingers to make it like a switch. Three, two, one. Let go. I'm going to go through our body and we're going to flip the switch. We're going to flip all the circuits that are holding this energy in our body. This energy we're burning unnecessarily because we feel like we need to keep it together. Keep it together. Physically, mentally, emotionally, keep it together. How do we do that? We hold. We're going to turn off the power and trust that it's going to be okay. If we let go of that muscular, emotional, and mental tension, contraction, and expand, we'll be okay. So try it. The face. Three, two, one. And really note what that felt like to let go of that tension, to just drop all muscular energy and tension. That's what we're going to do all through the body. Ultimately, when you practice this on your own, you're going to do what I call cycle through the body. You're going to do a zone, then a zone, then a zone, then a zone, all the way through your body. And you're going to start again. Each time you pass through, you will have incrementally moved your body that much more deeply into a state of expansion. And see what that does for you. You'll begin to breathe more deeply. You'll feel more still, more silent, more content in the moment. Your mind, as I said, a muscle of sorts, will relax as well and let go of compulsive, excessive, obsessive thoughts. The obsessive feelings like you need to be doing something will dissipate. The depressed feelings of emotional contraction will alleviate and you will begin to see the world in a lighter perspective all through the incremental release of muscular tension. That's all we're doing. The face. Three, two, one. Release that dropping sensation. Next zone, zone two, the top of the head. Three, two, one. Release. And again, it's as if the skin just went... There should be no effort. It should take no effort to sit in a chair. None. There's no reason to have be holding any muscular tension of any sort. There's no reason. So let's find that place where we're sitting in complete neutrality, exerting no effort whatsoever, just being. The back of the head. Three, two, one. Release. And you go, well, what does the back of the head feel like? These are things which we're not used to focusing on. We're used to contracting. We're not used to expanding. Typically, when we want to expand, we have a drink. We have a shot. We smoke a joint, we pop a pill, we go to a masseuse. We're used to other people or other processes taking care of that for us because it's very difficult. We are naturally resistant to expansion because we contract to protect ourselves. So it's very difficult to do something which intuitively feels, intuitively feels like it puts you at risk. To relax is to put yourself at risk in a way. So we find it difficult to do ourselves. So we pay other people or we buy things which will help us do that because we don't feel we can do it ourselves, but you can. And if you're not familiar with how it feels to relax the muscles at the back of your head, it's because you've probably never thought about it. That's what this technique is. It's building an awareness of your own ability to control the musculature of your body. And by expanding the musculature of your body, by going from a state of contraction to expansion physically, it induces a state of expansion within your emotions and your mind it will clear your head and you will be in what I call an expanded state, still, quiet, at peace, content. So all we're doing in these sessions is practicing our ability to do that. But again, it's okay that you're resistant to this, this technique, to this process. It's as if someone said, jump off a cliff to save your life. You go, but jumping off a cliff is dangerous. Why would I do that? Well, of course you wouldn't, but that's what it feels like. Releasing musculature is like jumping off a cliff. We instinctively feel that's dangerous. But in this particular case, it's really good for you. You just have to move past those feelings of resistance and trust that when you come out on the other side, you're going to feel a hundred times better. The muscles at the back of the head. Three, two, one, turn off the power, release. And again, you'll feel a slight dropping sensation. Muscular release feels like a sort of dropping. You're letting go. If tension is this, whoop, relaxation is this. Whoop. So give in to that dropping sensation. And again, trust. It may feel dangerous. It may feel risky. You may feel resistance. That's actually a really good sign. When you feel resistance, it means you've come up against some contraction that needs to be released. So move past the resistance. Zone four is the neck. Three, two, one. Release. 
And you'll get better and better at this. So don't be frustrated if at first you go, I don't feel the muscles of my neck. I don't know what that feels like. Try. Just focus on the neck. And you're going to let go of the tiniest amount of tension. The tiniest amount of tension. Three, two, one. Release. And you'll begin to become aware that you were holding tension. Because myself included, I forget. I'm, I lose track. Sometimes I think, I'm okay. I'm relaxed. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm chill. But I'll start to do this and I'll go, wait a minute. Wow. On a scale of one to ten, I thought I was a six. Maybe I was a six, but I can get all the way down to a one. So gauge yourself. And I used to talk about this a lot more and I forgot, but maybe I should bring it back. I used to say, give yourself a number. See where you started. If I started today at a nine, have you moved yourself to a 8.5? Any movement is valid and useful because remember, any amount of expansion is that much movement away from contraction. You can't do both at the same time. The neck. Three, two, one, release. Deep breath. Whenever you feel an impulse to take a deep breath, take it. That's your body expanding. And your body's going to start to get on board. The deeper into this you get, the more relaxed you get, the more your body's going to say, in effect, ah, I see where we're going with this. Okay. I'm with you. Let's go. Let's keep going. And eventually it will just sweep over you and take over and you'll just drop into this beautifully deep, deep, relaxed, expanded state. And you'll see, you're going to get there now. Your shoulders, zone five, three, two, one, let them drop, release. Again, that dropping release sensation. And it's also a relief, as I like to say, because holding this tension has been exhausting. So when someone says to you, it's as someone said, said to me, Larry, by the way, take the rest of the day off. Your muscles, just give them the day off. You thought you had to be at work today with your muscles, but you don't. So take the day off. And you go, really? Oh, God, thank you. I thought I had to hold this all day. So give yourself permission to take the rest of the day off. Zone six is the chest, the stomach into the waist. Three, two, one, release. Again, the chest into the stomach and the waist. Three, two, one, release. And again, the snapping of the fingers is because you're flipping a switch. Power on power off. You're turning off the power to that muscle group. It's holding, 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 flip the switch, release. And that's what you're going to get better and better at. Again, I practice this every day, several times a day, because I just want to get better at it. I've seen the benefits. I want to be in any situation and be able to go and turn off the tension. Practice makes perfect, gets easier and easier. It always feels weird to me still. I always still feel at risk when I let go of muscular tension. That my instinctive response is, how can I let go of my tension? It's what's holding me together. Still, after all this time. But now, I know, I recognize that feeling as my body trying to protect itself instinctively. So I just move through it. Zone 7 is down the back into the pelvis. Three, two, one, release. Again, the back, down the waist into the pelvis, three, two, one, release. Now I've mentioned this before, the pelvis is a real tension center. We hold a lot of tension there instinctively. We try to keep that area together for obvious reasons. The pelvis is the area of sexuality and waste elimination. Very sensitive, uncomfortable topics, uncomfortable subjects. Uh, we have lots of anxiety about loss of control or feelings, desires. There's all sorts of things going on there. And we get anxious about it, so we tend to clench in that area. So really tune into that area and don't be afraid. No one's in the room. It's just you sitting in a chair. See what happens if you let go of a little tension in that area. What sort of feelings does that induce in you? And you may feel anxious. That may make you feel uncomfortable, but just move past that. Tension eliminates feeling and sensation. When you release tension, feelings and sensations come rushing in. That could be frightening, uncomfortable. So just go with that. The waist, the back down into the waist and pelvis. Three, two, one, release. Again, flip that switch. Again, three, two, one, the waist and pelvis, release. Three, two, one, the waist and pelvis, release. And you might feel the slightest, tiniest release. That's good. It's like a hundred pennies adds up to a dollar. Just keep moving a penny's worth, a penny's worth, a penny's worth. It is an incremental but cumulative effect.
That's why you have to be patient. That's why you have to sometimes be willing to put in, let's say, more than five or 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour. I do hour sessions sometimes. Sometimes just because I have the time and I really want to practice. And sometimes because it will take me an entire hour, sorry to say, an entire hour to tap, 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 small changes, tap away at that tension, that contraction, until finally, 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 I'll feel my body just give in and expand. So be patient. If you're at all a decisive, active, intelligent person, you use contraction very effectively for your life. You use it to protect yourself. You use it to advance your goals. So we're very good at contracting. Don't be surprised if your body is reluctant and resistant to giving up a contracted position. It's what we do to get through the day, every single minute of the day, even in our dreams. I've awakened from some intense dreams, so tense, so contracted, and I'm amazed. I was sleeping, for God's sake. <laughs> no, I would, uh, it wasn't a decision. My body was instinctively, in my dreams, protecting me, taking up a position. So don't be surprised at the resistance you feel. But there's no danger in expansion. It cannot hurt you. It can only help you. So part of this practice is not just learning how to expand the musculature, but learning how to move past your own resistance. You will get more and more familiar with the process of moving past your own resistance. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. For the rest of my life, I can guarantee it, I will be resistant to this process. That's never going to go away. My body is designed to protect me. We're instinctively designed to protect ourselves. That will always be there. Thank goodness, really, because I react to situations, I make decisions quickly, I contract mentally, physically, emotionally to protect myself. So my body will always do that for the rest of my life. If it didn't, I might actually put myself at risk. So that will always be there, but you will get better and better at knowing when you may push past it, when it's appropriate to push past it for your own good. That's the odd thing about being human. Our instincts are there to protect us, but they don't always do what's best for us. We, as intelligent creatures, have to sometimes make an executive decision and override that impulse, that instinct, and say, you may want to stay contracted. You may feel as though that's the safe place to be. But I'm here to tell you, excuse me one second. I'm here to tell you that I know best. I know better. So expansion, scanning, is a form of taking control of your very being and saying, I know better. I know better. I've discovered a better way. So you'll move past that. Zone eight, the final zone, is down the legs, across the knees, and into the feet. Three, two, one. Turn off the power. Release. And the feet are amazing. If you can, excuse me, I just gave us all an earthquake. The feet are amazing. The feet are a nerve center, like nothing else in the body. Many of the organs in our body have nerve endings associated with the feet. That's why feet massage, a foot massage, feels so good and is so good for you. Because we hold a lot of nerve tension in our feet. If you can learn how to relax the muscles of your feet, you will do enormous things for your overall health and well-being. So think about the feet for a minute. Think of them as these very strong steel contraptions that hold your body anywhere from 100 to 300 something pounds every single day. Take it, they take a tremendous pounding. So they hold you together. They're amazing. Okay. And yet they're so sensitive. It's incredible. The feet are so sensitive to touch and feeling. It's astounding that, that uh, our creator, whoever that may be, would have designed a mechanism that was so sturdy and strong and yet so sensitive. So if you can learn how to tune into your feet, think for a moment about your feet. Direct your focus to the musculature of your feet, and then on my count, release, incrementally release the smallest amount of tension. Three, two, one. Release. Now, the feet will be particularly resistant because they're designed to protect you, to be ready to walk, to move at any given moment. So they will be resistant. As you begin to focus on the feet and you feel this incremental release of muscular tension, you might feel a slight throbbing. What is that? As you expand, as you relax the foot, you open up the blood vessels and arteries and veins to the foot. The blood comes rushing in and you feel a throbbing sensation as the blood flows more freely to that area. That's true of any muscular group in your body. As you begin to release tension in the face, the top of the head, the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders, the chest and stomach, the back and pelvis, the legs and feet, you may begin to feel a throbbing. In fact, your entire body may begin to throb as your muscular tension releases and your blood flows more freely through your body. One of the reasons we, we experience high blood pressure, which is not good for you, you mean, we all know that, is because as your body constricts, as you become tense, if you're in a tense situation, you know, your blood pressure goes up, it's because you've constricted the musculature and therefore constricted the flow of blood. 
So your heart has to work harder to get blood to the different regions of your body. So there's a greater pressure in the veins, which is not good for you. It ultimately can lead to strokes as the blood vessels, you know, hemorrhage. Um, it's just not good for your overall health. That's why meditation and relaxation is so good for your overall health. So one of the signs that you have begun to expand and lowered your blood pressure, in fact, is a slight throbbing sensation in your chest. You become aware of the beating of your heart. Your hands begin to throb, your feet, your face, your head, a gentle, soothing throbbing. So watch for that. So take a deep breath. And another. One more. So we've completed the muscular cycle, which you can now, we would now normally repeat and go through, cycle through again and again, each time moving yourselves into a deeper and deeper state of expansion. Sit for 15 seconds now in stillness and silence. Deep breath. So as I always do, I will describe the change for me and you can see how it feels for you. I always have the same initial experience when I've expanded, when I've gone through these expansive steps. I suddenly feel more comfortable in my chair. I just feel at ease. I feel as though I could sit here for a half an hour, not move, not say anything, not do anything and be perfectly fine with that. I've come back into myself. I'm comfortable in my own skin. All sense of compulsion, that feeling that I need to do something or think something or say something has dissipated. Whatever I was worried about, whatever thoughts I were having, I suddenly can't remember what they were. I'm sure they'll come back. But I just feel a sort of a stillness and contentment as a result of moving myself into a more expanded state. So now you judge for yourself. When you do this practice, it's really important to pay attention to the changes that occur. Note the difference between how it feels to be contracted and the changes that begin to occur in your body, in your soul, in your mind as you begin to expand. Even the smallest amount of expansion will re result in some sort of experiential change. Take note of that so that you can be encouraged by the process and you can remember what the goal is and the next time you come back to it, be that much more familiar with what we're aiming for. And, you know, you'll see me sit in stillness and silence sometimes for no particular reason. It's because I'm just really enjoying being able to sit still. You know, when I was growing up, I was told I was just hyperact hyperactive. I just, you know, why won't you just sit still? Can't you just sit still? Same thing happened all the way through school, college, even in my adult life. People saying, just settle down, man. You're just really, you know, you're agitated. You're always thinking, you're always talking, you're always worrying. So when I find a moment of stillness and quiet, I'm sort of amazed. I go, oh. So that's what it's like to be content in the moment, to not feel as though I had to do something or go somewhere or say something or take some sort of action just to feel like it's perfectly fine and okay to just be. So sometimes I'll just sit and study that and I'll go, that's amazing. I love that. I don't spend much time in that place, but I try to get there as often as I can. Now I'll go back to my life and I'll be agitated and worried about things and taking action and fighting my way through the day as I always do. That's okay. That's me. But it's nice to know that we can bring ourselves to a state of calm, still, peace, quiet, and joy, at least a couple times a day. So that's it for today's session. It's called Scanning, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G. It is a relaxation technique which utilizes the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep state of physical. We work on the physical, and then by association, emotional, and then ultimately mental calm as those negative and compulsive thoughts just float away and you're left in a place of stillness and quiet, peace and joy. That's the goal. I will repost this session on my Facebook page for 24 hours. I will also post it on the Scanning Facebook page, which is a page just devoted to this, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G. If you want to look it up, like and follow, you'll get alerts whenever there's a new session. There's also a YouTube page for Scanning, which I post these to if you want to look at it there. So that's all. I always end every session with rule number one. Rule number one, the first rule of every single day, love yourself. This is what you were given. This is the gift you were given for better or worse. You got to love the whole thing. There's an infinite amount of love in the universe, so take as much as you need and just pile it on. And when you've given yourself so much love, you're so content with yourself that the love is spilling over and you have more than you can use, and take that extra and pass it around to people like myself and your friends and family. They will really appreciate it. Uh, that's all for today, folks. Have a great day. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.